the for loop is one of my favorite types of loops and that's going to do the same thing as we saw with the while and the do loop however why I like it so much is because it's all contained within one statement and I've seen a lot more people using the for loop now as opposed to the while or the do loop and so it, they all do pretty much the same thing up to this point the only thing is is just the syntax is different and then what gets checked is, is going to be different as well so let's go ahead and delete the code that I had here from the previous one and I'll leave that echo statement when it says you have finished the loop down there but we're going to go ahead and construct the for loop and so we're going to use the keyword for for and then we're going to go ahead and start our parentheses now you're going to look at this and say wait a minute you deleted the counter we're going to need a, a counter in order for this to run correctly and that is true we actually declare the counter here within the for statement so the first part of this is to declare the counter so I'll put in there dollar sign counter we'll set it equal to one and then we end that section with a semicolon. Now there's three sections that we're going to have in here. We're going to have the declaring of the counter, then we're going to go and the initializing of it. So we both declare and initialize it. The next section, which I'm going to type in here next, is the actual condition that we're going to test to see if it's true. And then the last section of this one is going to be the incrementing or the decrementing of our counter itself. And so you can see four, you've got counter is going to start off as one semicolon now the next section which is going to be the conditional statement which we're going to go ahead and say as long as counter is less than a hundred all right and then i'll end that one with a semicolon and then the last section that i talked about is the incrementing so i'll just put the dollar sign counter plus plus and then we'll go ahead and end that with the parenthesis so that's my for statement i'm going to go ahead and begin with the curly brace and then I'm spaced down a couple and end with another ending curly brace and so here's the structure of the for loop we start off with four the counter is set the condition is checked and then you've got your incrementing here and those three sections make up the syntax for the for loop and then I've got the opening and closing curly brace which is the code that will execute whenever that condition is true so let's go ahead and echo some something out. let's echo out that dollar sign counter and I'll go ahead and end that with this semicolon and then I'll go ahead and echo out a break tag there we go and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh now this looks just normal like we did before however um, we're gonna talk about this you'll see that it went through the first time and it ran the number one and so if you look back at our structure here we'll talk, talk, what hap talk about what happens here it says four we set counter as being equal to one, and then it's gonna check, so the first time it runs through, it's gonna set its counter to equal to one, and then it's gonna go ahead and check the condition. The condition was met. Notice that it skipped the incrementing. The first time it runs through, it skips the incrementing because it echoed out one. And you can see that it echoed out one. So the structure, the first time it runs through in the first iteration is going to be just the declaring and initializing of your counter and the conditional check to see if it's true or not so that's what happens the first time it runs through now the second time it runs through our clue is going to be at the very end when you see that 99 is down here there it is 99 is down here the clue to how it ends or how it does the second iteration all the way to the ending of our loop is this okay after it goes ahead and runs through the first loop the second time it comes up through here the incrementer happens first before the condition is checked so let's just go ahead and say we're now at uh, 99 counter echoes out 99 right here it echoes out a break tag right here and then it comes back up to the for loop the first thing that happens after it has already run the first time so this is the last time it's going to run is it's going to first off increment it to 100 so it's going to do the incrementing here to 100 and then it will check the condition so you'll notice that it skips this whole initialize and declare. That only happens the first time it runs through. So now in the, every other time that it runs through, it's going to increment it or decrement it depending on your structure. It's going to increment it here and then check the condition, which it's going to increment 99 to 100, and 100 is not less than 100, so it didn't display 100. And that's kind of the structure for that. I know that's kind of confusing, but when you're working with loops, you kind of have to understand how they work because if you're writing code for something, you may not display an, a, a number just because of the way the loop structure works. So you really have to have a good understanding of how loops work. And the for loop is a great loop if you can understand that. So the first time the loop runs, the counter is set to one and then the condition is checked. Those two parts of my for statement run. Every other time after that, 
it's going to increment first or decrement and then check the condition and so that's something a key to keep in mind when you're using the for loop but the for loop kind of works very similar to the do in the while loop its basic syntax is going to be all within one line rather than having to declare the counter first however the functioning of it is going to work very similar where it's going to repeat the code over and over and over again until the condition is no longer met so this concludes the video on the for loop within php